Okay, welcome. I gotta set the camera up. This is the Dumb Talking for Smart People podcast. Is that what you're calling it? That's yeah. I already did. I've already done an episode. Mm. By the time there's, yeah, I did the first Spider-Man. Are you Um, we're basically setting things up. We this are doing is the. the don't ask why there's a chair thrown on the ground and Lego fell. But I don't think they could see over here. I think mm. we've kind of got just this area, hopefully, mm. that they can see. Can my laptop turn on? No, it can't. Excuse me, sir. Can you, like, not be dumb? Excuse me, sir. Can you not be horrible, please, for five minutes? Can you not just... Can things just work for me, please? Thank you. I would go on my phone till it's done, but my phone's a one, 1%. I wish I could see what the camera sees, like, from over here, because yeah. I can't tell if it can see me or not. Um, don't knock my Stanley painting over, please. It's behind you. Oh. It already fell down once when I was putting a microwave on this desk. This time we're going to try microwave or microwave instead of a microwave. Um, here, can you pass me my Diet Coke? Don't you drink Diet, my Diet Cocaine. Coke. Diet <laughs> Cocaine. You snorted a Pop Rocks before. What no, no, a Baby Bottle Pop. You should have got the mystery flavor. <laughs> because that one's white. <laughs> no, I got the blue the blue flavor. The, the blue, blue raspberry. The blue, the blue, the blue, the blue. Um anyway, so, so this is our messy. really messy Star Wars background. It looked perfect two minutes ago. And then you smashed it. And, then, and it. then I ruined it by trying to move all this crap over. Uh, uh so all, yeah. only the only things that fell are the Legos. So basically I'm gonna pull up the Wikipedia article and the IMDB for Phantom Menace, and I'm basically just going to read you some trivia and uh, read the plot and whatever. Um. Milk. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Your laptop on? <laughs> it's loading. Give me like five hours. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we took down the Spider-Man display I had, and we made a nice Star Wars one. Um, I'm gonna have to do a better Spider-Man one. When oh I wait, Spider I don't think 2. they can see the giant stuffy. I, yeah, we have a giant stormtrooper. I think they can. Hopefully, they can. I don't Hopefully. know. It's like beside me almost. Mm -hmm. I ho really hope that they can not see like how terribly trashed this room is outside of you this. You got just a bag one. on your bed. Yeah, this is what I do to cover the. I use this to cover the ugly. That's not the default dance. I know. So what's in your filing cabinet? Leave that alone. Leave uh, that alone. This one's actually pretty good. Um. Okay. So I gotta open up my browser. My browser history. Oh no! I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what it is, but I heard lots of people saying it. Clean my browser history. You're a tree. You don't have a browser history. It's a thing from TikTok. Just shut up. A thing from dumb bro. I don't know. Dumb, dumb, dumb talk. Dumb talk. Dumb talk. Yeah. That's what this is called. Dumb talk. No, it's shut up. <laughs> what is it? This called? Dumb talking for smart people podcast. Yeah. So dumb talk. So, Dumb Talking for Smart People podcast, the short form is Dumb Talk. Or is it Smart People Dumb what? Dumb Talk. Is it Smart Talking for Dumb People or Dumb People for Smart Talk? What? <laughs> what? I think we figured it out. <laughs> dumb People for Smart Talking. <laughs> dumb People we for We do smart a little trolling. <laughs> smart Talk or Dumb Talk. Okay, this computer's so slow. Can you, like, not be a dumb, dumb... Can I tell you something? Welcome... Well, welcome to the ranch. The ranch. Mermaid Phil. I like cheese. I like fleas. I like how you don't, like... You're just sitting there staring at the back of my laptop. This page isn't responding. It's just the, the new tab. <laughs> Why? Why is this laptop such Dumb a talk butt for smart people. This is such a broken... Or is it smart talk for dumb people? You're so broken. Why are you so broken? Why are you... Why are you broken? Why, why, why are you broken? Why, why, why are you terrible? Why? 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 <laughs> oh no, anyway.
anyway. Oh no, our table, it's broken. Just give us like five hours, man. I should have just printed out. I should have just printed my notes out. I used to do that, but on, on a different thing. Most of your stickers on the back of your laptop are Bart Simpson. Yeah, I got a lot of Simpsons ones because I had like a whole Simpsons. Er, Welcome to the They Burger. had a lot. They had a Burger King one. I, oh, yeah, you were there. Yeah, I showed it to you. Welcome to the ranch. The ranch. Mermaid Dr. Phyllis. Okay, well, I'm just going to beat children. No. That's a Why do you have Froakie in between Stewie Griffin and Marvel Ultimate Alliance? I don't know, man. Oh, yeah, if you guys can't know, can't see it, you're so dumb. If you I can't see it, I don't have a new hope. <laughs> I have <laughs> one, two, three, five, six, seven. That's all I have for the Star Wars movies. So I'm going to have to find... I found a new hope at Recordworks one day, but I didn't get it. I should have. I have to And then it. we have Star Wars 2 for the DS, and then we also have Complete Saga for the DS, Complete Saga for Xbox, Clone Wars for... Uh, Xbox, Clone Wars for computer, Saga for computer, um, <laughs> Force Awakens game for, uh, Okay, I'm on Wikipedia. PS4. I'm searching for Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. What if Episode 1 and actually put Episode 4? Because... Uh, I put The Phantom Menace, so, okay, here we are. I am proud to be 68 on... hours later. I'm on the I'm on Wikimedia. I I'm on the the pa the page. You want some con? No. Can I keep your stop, apps? Stop. Can just I keep stop. It? Just stop. Just stop. Can I keep it? Can you just stop? Can I keep it? It's a deodorant body spray. <laughs> okay, so stop grabbing my stuff. You're a sinner. Okay. Alright. So here we go. I'm going to go over, there's, let's see, we got the plot, the cast, uh, I don't think I need, I'll go over some notable cast members. I'm not really going to need to go over the plot. You tell me the cast members, and then I'll tell you who they play in the movie. Not in the, not in the movie, but, well, maybe. Anyway. Yeah, because I, I, I don't, I would I'm not going to know the names of the cast. I was going to say, I would go over the big, like, the development of the film and that, but that's kind of boring, I think, for you. And for everyone um, However, I'm getting, there are some cool, interesting things. So first off, I'm going to go with the cast. Liam... <laughs> anyway, Liam Neeson. I think he's Qui-Gon Jinn. Yes, he's also. I'm going to go over, over who I know. He's also um, Ra Rachel Ghoul in Batman Begins. Mm. Uh, Ewan McGregor. Obi Wan. Yes, he's also Black Mask in Birds of Prey. Can you shut the door? <laughs> the way I slowly got up. I just uh, yeah. Just casually yeah. to close the just, door. Just, just yeah. Uh, Natalie Portman. She is Padme Amidala. Yeah, and she is also Evie in V for Vendetta. Uh -huh. As well as Jane Foster in the Thor movies. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake Lloyd. Jake Lloyd. Is that it's Anakin? Anakin. It's yeah. Anakin. Can you let me talk? Ian McDiarm, Dr I don't know how to say his name. Um, well, let's go for who's left. So wait, is it going to, like, put every single character, like Yoda and stuff like that? It just has all the actors. So Yoda would be there. Well, those are voice actors. I'm talking, like, I'm only going to, well, it has all of them, but I'm only going to list the actual interesting ones. Oh, so it's actual people that you see? Yes. Is he Captain Pancanada? No, he's uh, he's Palpatine. Ian oh, McDiarmid, I don't know how to say his name. Um. Is he? Pacanada. No, that's the same guy. I just said that it was Palpatine. Um, and then I don't really don't think there's anyone here specifically who would matter. Um, Let me see. No, 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 no. Uh, just Samuel L. Jackson. Mace um, Windu. Yeah, of course. Just he tell me every single guy. Through. No, this song. would take forever. Ray Park. Ray Park. Ray Park. Who is he? 
Oh, he doesn't do the voice, but he only does the physical work for this character. Whereas someone named Peter something, I'm not going to try, does the voice of him. Who is it? Darth Maul. Darth Maul. Um. Kira Knightley's in this. I didn't even know that. Kira Knightley. I don't know who she plays. The decoy of Queen Amidala. Well, you don't see her actual face. Yeah, um. And that's it. That's really the only interesting ones. Other than Captain Pin Canada, but uh. Um. Then the development doesn't really matter. Blah, 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 blah. Um, themes. These are interesting. Like previous Star Wars films, The Phantom Menace makes several references to historical events and films that George Lucas watched in his youth. The Star Wars films typically mix several concepts from different mythologies together, drawing heavily from the hero's journey, an, archety an archetypical template developed by comparative mythologist Joseph Campbell. I actually have studied the hero's journey. This film also notably borrows from Ben-Hur, including the pod racing sequence, which mir mirrors the chariot race scene. Additionally, which Ben-Hur is a 1959 film. Additionally, the end of the celebration scene closely resembles a Roman parade in Ben-Hur. There are many references to Christianity in the film, such as the appearance of Darth Maul, whose design is supposed to look like the devil. Um, they also feature a Christian narrative involving Anakin Skywalker as, as the Chosen One, slash Jesus Christ, who is conceived of a virgin birth because there was no father. However, unlike Jesus, Anakin will fall from, falls from grace and obviously becomes Darth Vader, but then fulfills his destiny in Return of the Jedi because he's supposed to bring order to the Force, and he becomes evil, but turns good again and kills Palpatine. Japanese films, such as Akira Samoa's The Hidden Fortress, influenced the original Star Wars films. Scholars say that The Phantom Menace was influenced by Korean and Japanese culture. Um, the Jedi practiced Zen-like meditation and martial arts, as did the ancient Japanese samurai warriors. The name Qui-Gon attempts the term Qui-Gong, which refers to the Chinese discipline involving meditation and cultivation of the flow of the vital energy called Qi, for healing, health, and combat. Um, yeah, so as with other Star Wars films, the fam themes about family and hope are featured prominently in the episode Legacy of Disney Gallery The Mandalorian. Dave Filoni claims that he used the, the use of the Duel of the Fates during the light super duel between Darth Maul and Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi represents the fight for the fate of Anakin Skywalker. According to Filoni, Qui-Gon Jinn acts like a father. Get out of here. What? Sit on your side. Why? Because you need to. Towards Anakin because he feels he needs... There's nothing it. for me to do. Just listen. He feels he needs one after taking him from his mother, having realized that the Jedi shouldn't be opposed to love and care. In the end, Qui-Gon dies unless Anakin loses his father figure. Obi-Wan Kenobi ultimately comes his master to honor Jinn's dying wish despite his initial contempt for him. And while he comes to eventually see him like a brother and shown an attack of villains and revenge of the Sith, he doesn't act like a father, which coupled with the Jedi's indifference seals Anakin's fate. So Qui-Gon was supposed to be like Anakin's dad, but he died. Four. So basically, now and Obi-Wan was like a brother to Anakin, but Anakin never had a dad, which made him evil, and the Jedi didn't care. So, um, novelizations and comics were made. Um, there were video games released based off of this movie. A pod racing game titled Star Wars Episode One Racer was released for Nintendo 64 and PC and I believe PlayStation 1 and a pinball machine so I'm, I'm thinking we should totally play that racing game as um, the PC out there sometime soon. I don't know if we can do it two player but we'd have to try. I've heard it was really good. Probably and uh, so yeah and that's really see oh my god I found it okay so there's obviously the release in 1999 and the home media release was April 4th, 2000 on VHS, and like a bunch of different versions over time. But there was a 3D re-release, which I mentioned while we were watching it together. On September 28th, 2010, which was when I was four, like I thought, it was- five. A, No, I wasn't five till uh, October. It was announced that all six films in the series would be stereo converted to 3D. These will be re-released in episode order beginning with The Phantom Menace, which was released to cinemas on February 10th, 2012. So I saw it in 2012 on two day, probably a couple days after you were born. No, two, 
February it was released. 10th? It was released February tenth, but I probably saw it two or three days later. So you would have been like two days old when I saw it. Prime Focus Limited did the conversion. Blah 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 blah. blah. However, the re-releases of episodes two to six were postponed and canceled after Lu after Lucasfilm was bought by Disney, who decided to focus on the development of Star Wars: The Force Awakens. So that's why I never saw the rest of them in theaters re-release because they only did Phantom Menace and they meant to do more, but Disney bought Lucasfilm. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I thought that that was actually it. That's cool. I, I knew there had to have been. General Mills and Brisk were promotional partners in North America for the 3D re-release, but promotion was limited. The film was extensively promoted in Japan. Products promoting Phantom Menace were sold at 7-Eleven, Domino's Pizza, Pepsi, and I don't even know what that thing is. Kellogg's promoted the film internationally, and French restaurant, French restaurant Quick launched three Star Wars-themed burgers. Oh, I would love to try a Star Wars burger. You would also love to try Mom's spaghetti. Yes. Following an advance, this is critical response. Following a screen, dab. Following an advanced screening on Saturday, May eighth, nineteen ninety nine, several newspapers broke an agreement with Fox and published reviews of the films on Sunday, May 9th. In a front page review, the Los Angeles Daily News gave it three and a half stars, calling it pretty good and outstanding in many parts. The New York Daily News was less positive, giving it two and a half stars. Variety also made its review by Tom McCarthy available on the Sunday, with McCarthy calling it the most widely anticipated and heavy the hype film in the modern times, but said the, scare, the film could scarcely help being a letdown. So a lot of people have said it's, it's kind of mixed. Some people think it's decent, some people think it's really bad, and you know some people really hate it. However, here's a good summary here. Ewan McGregor said in 2002 that he was slightly disappointed that the film was kind of flat and believed that the next film and franchise would have much more humor and color. The introduction of many chlorians, microscopic organisms that met mediate the use of the Force, has been regarded as controversial. Some viewed it as a concept that negates the Force's spiritual quality. I had to take a sip of your drink there. Yeah. Um, blah, 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 blah. There has been some contra controversy over whether several Aryan characters reflect racial stereotypes. This is where we get to the racism. For example... The oafish, slow-witted Jar Jar Binks has long, droopy ears reminiscent of dreadlocks and spoke with what many perceived as Caribbean putaways reminiscent of Jamaican, Jama Jamaicans. Drew Grant describes the character as servile and cowardly, a black minstrelish stereotype on par with, par with Stephen Fetchett. Yes, Fetchett. Fetchett, that's his name. Georgetown University professor of African American Studies said that the entire Gungan species seems suggestive of a primitive African tribe, with Boss Nass described as a fat, bumbling character over a stereo African tribal chieftain. The greedy and corrupt Nemodians of the Trade Federation have been known as resembling East Asian stereotypes, and the unprincipled trader water has been interpreted as a Jewish stereotype, reminiscent of Charles Dickens' character. I don't want to say his name. What's my name? Faggot. Lucas has done. It's probably Foggin or something, but. Still, he's from Oliver Twist. Lucas has denied all these implications and said criticizing the American media for using opinions from the internet as a reliable source for news stories. Lucas adds that it reflects more of the racism of the commenters than it does the movie. However, animator Rob Coleman said ahead of the said Rob Coleman said ahead of the film's release that Walter's main reasons were inspired by footage of Alec Guinness as Foggin in Oliver Twist. Alec Guinness is Ben Kenobi, so he that's interesting. Um, so yeah, Accolades, the film was basically, um, nominated for a bunch of different awards, but lost all of them to The Matrix, which makes sense. After the film's release, Weird Al Yankovic released a parody song and music video, The Saga Begins, in which he interprets the film's plot from Obi-Wan's point of view to the, due, to the tune of American Pie. This was included as a bonus feature on a 2011 Star Wars Blu-ray. And in a 2018 Saturday Night Live comedy rap video, Natalie Portman reprised her appearance as Queen Amidala from The Phantom Menace and defended the prequel trilogy. Darth Maul's lightsaber fighting style served as inspiration for the 20, 2003 viral video Star Wars Kid. Oh, have you seen this video? Oh, it was freaking funny back then. I wasn't even born, but I remember it was still pretty big when I was little. Who appears to die in the Maul, who appears to die in the Phantom Menace, was resurrected for the animated series Star Wars: The Clone Wars, and also appears in Star Wars Rebels and Solo: A Star Wars Story. So we got more of him to look forward to. In 2012, IGN named Maul the 16th greatest Star Wars character. A similar weapon to his dual blade has appeared in, in Star, War, Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. And then obviously there's sequels, and that's really all we needed to talk about. What did you think of this movie? What was your kind of opinion on 
a lot of this stuff. Do you agree with what Wikipedia had with it's, the bad reviews or the good ones or It's definitely the one of the worst Star Wars movies. Um but it has lots of memes in it. But that doesn't make it good. I know. But it has funny memes and um but some people won't understand the memes if they're too young. So I feel like it was a good movie for when it came out, but now it's just not that good. Well, I think a lot of I, I don't think it's as bad as people say it is, and I, yeah, I'm, everyone's gonna are. everyone's gonna hate me for defending. I'm not defending the Phantom Menace, but it doesn't make me like want to kill myself watching it, which I feel like a lot of people want to they'll like literally skip Phantom Menace watching a Star Wars rewatch just because like they hate it. But like I want to die watching the Disney series, like, three. But, like, the prequels aren't as bad as they seem, especially not this one. Attack of the Clones is my least favorite of the prequels. But this one, I actually, you know, I think Darth Maul definitely helps with it because, like, that was, like, my first, like, special lightsaber in the movies. My, like, he's one of the coolest characters of all time for Star Wars. least favorite of the prequels is definitely the first one. This one? Yeah. And then the second and then the third. So, yeah, I, I honestly have always found Attack of the Clones the least interesting out of all of them, out of every Star you Wars really movie. You really think the sand pit thing is not interesting? Well, we'll get to that when we review it. But yeah. anyway, I'm... Dead. Charlie Scene! Anyway, I'm A for Awesome. This is B for Epic. No. We are the Dumb Talking for Smart People podcast. A.K.A. And we, dumb Talk. And we... That's actually a good, good small name. And we are leaving now. This was a good first episode.